to date potheads because I always wanted to have access to weed. <laughs> and um, I have to clear something up because there is a misconception, okay? People think that potheads don't have goals. <laughs> okay, well then, explain this to me. How come I dated a pothead who had very lofty goals? He wanted to get high with as many different animals as possible. <laughs> That's right. That is a goal. He called me up one night all excited. He was like, oh my god, Brooke, this is so awesome. You're never going to believe it. And I was like, what? You got a steady job? He was like, no, you're funny. No, I just got high with a bat. <laughs> So potheads do have goals. They're just fucking stupid. <laughs> okay, I have uh, one more for you. Um, I rode a horse for the first time about a month ago, and it was kind of scary. Because horses are big and they're just kind of scary. It was my aunt's horse, and I'm sorry, he's falling asleep. Look at him. You're just, are you just really, you're really high. <laughs> you look, well, he does it. Like you're not like laughing, but you look like you're having a good time. I love laughing. You're not to look at me more. Okay. So, I was on a horse for the first time, and I was scared. This horse is so scary. And uh, it was my aunt's horse, and she was assuring me that it was okay because horses aren't scary. She said, Brooke, horses aren't scary. All you do is, is you, just, you just imagine that you're riding a guy real hot. And I was like, oh, sweet, because I'm a professional at that. <laughs> Thanks, Aunt Barb. And also, bullshit, because riding a horse is nothing like riding a guy. I've never had more than one orgasm when riding a guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. Thanks so much, everyone. So, do we have any pot smokers in the house tonight? All right, most of you, do you know that you're here? <laughs> Excellent. I was over at my friend's house the other day, and uh, we were watching uh, Jeff Foxworthy, who I don't know if you, any, if you know is uh, another comedian. Oh, yeah. That's right, but uh, he's famous for one of his things that he does is, you might be a redneck if. While well, sitting there watching it with my friends, and I realized, you know what, this could probably work for potheads. So I thought about it, and I came up with a few things that I think would be the exact same, but for potheads. If you have more plants growing in your basement than you do in your outside garden, you might be a pothead. If you have a collection of fruit that all have tin foil folded somewhere inside of them, you might be a pothead. If your grocery list always consists of eye drops, Febreze, snack sized baggies, funnions, and chicken nuggets. <laughs> you might be a pothead. If you know by first name basis your 7 Eleven clerk and always use a bag to carry out all the shit you bought, you might be a pothead. And lastly, if you, anyone can understand this and you know what they mean and you get excited by it, you might be a pothead. Keith, Volcano, blueberry papers, or ganja. Anyone getting excited over that? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I've got a pretty strange name because I'm not native to this country. 
Um, actually was born in Africa and I came to this country with my family when I was really young, which is a big relief because it means my tits were spared from being a saggy third world statistic by about this much. <laughs> or should I say this much? <laughs> um, I do have fond memories of Africa. You know, I'll never lose faith that those countries can get their act together. I know there's a lot of corruption and mayhem, but um, you know, a few a few minor adjustments and we'd be well on our way. My first round of advice would be that uh, they increase the age for the military draft to 18 instead of six. <laughs> instead of six. Child soldiers in Africa, is that about the worst idea you've ever heard of? If you gave my six-year-old a gun, there'd be a massacre tonight at Chuck E. Cheese over skee ball points. <laughs> Here in this country, we have a slogan that children are our future, and in Africa, we like to say, our kids will shoot you if you talk about the future. <laughs> I'm very lucky to be married. I have a great husband. He's very kind to me. Uh, but every now and then, he will complain that we don't have enough sex, which is why I had to talk to him last week and say, honey, I like you, just not in that way. <laughs> My girlfriend Katie called me recently. She was in a panic. She and I are friends from church. Katie was up north with other couples doing a spiritual retreat. She walked in on one of the husbands getting out of the shower completely naked. I said, Katie, why didn't you knock? She said, I did. But you know Jim, he's hard of hearing. I said, that's true. In fact, that's an excellent excuse. You can totally rectify the situation. Katie, just go find Jim, apologize to him in front of his wife, say that you knocked, he must not have heard you, it'll never happen again. And Katie said, you know what, that's really good advice, I'll take it, you know, I think I was just freaking out in the moment. I said, okay, see ya. She said, Nardos, wait. I said, what? She said, Jim's really well endowed. And I said, good for him. She said, no, it looked like he had a third leg. I'm going to put his wife on my prayer list. I said, Katie, they've been married 10 years. They have three kids. You put her on your giant vagina list. <laughs> I do recommend getting married, though. I think it's really good for you because I was incredibly sensitive before I moved in with my husband. And that first year, we both made our shared mistakes. Mine was that I tried to be this TV wife from the 50s who had dinner ready and couldn't wait to hear about his long day at work. Sure enough, my husband didn't want to talk about work. He was just glad to be home, watch a little TV, relax. So I learned my lesson the hard way because one day I made dinner and said, honey, how was your day? He said, normal. And I said, normal easy or normal hard? And he said, normal, shut the fuck up. <laughs> So, uh, you ever wipe your face with your husband's bath towel on accident? I did that once. It has to go down as one of the worst newlywed moments of my life. You wake up groggy, you brush your teeth, you wash your hands, and then you wipe your face with ball sweat? Which doesn't even make sense because it's the towel he uses to get out to dry off after a shower. So there I was wondering, how dirty were his balls to begin with? That's all I have, you guys. Thank you so much. You know how uh, certain songs become pivotal moments in your life, you know, that you hear them at a certain point, they become kind of a soundtrack to a special time in your life, good or bad, you know, they just become the soundtrack to that moment. You think back when that song, it recalls the memory. I mention this because back in the 90s, I had this six month fling, you guys. Freaking freaky ass chick, kinkiest human being I ever met in my life. And the only thing she ever wanted to listen to when we made the love was Sarah McLaughlin records. <laughs> yeah, fast forward 15 years, I'm trying to explain to my wife why I get a boner every time the abused dog commercial comes on. <laughs> It's like, no, 
baby, obviously it's not the visuals, it's the song and the me- Well, you know, she did used to beat me with an electrical cord and stuff me in a kennel once in a while, but it's a different time in my life. Not that person anymore. May have been some pooping on the floor once in a while, but... It's a nice looking room of people, got some good looking folks, got some beautiful black women up here, I'm glad I dressed up for you. Yeah, I'm gonna go off the script a little bit. I gotta ask you this. I don't always get to tell you. Know, I, I do a lot of really white rooms, so I gotta ask you this. And I hope it's not too controversial or anything. But ladies, what's with the fake ass middle names on your Facebook names, your Facebook accounts? You know what I'm talking about, Monique. Ten steps ahead, all you haters, Johnson. <laughs> you sweet baby with the big booty ass Jones. I don't get it. That's cool. I don't get it. I just wonder when you, did y'all just wake up one day and decide your Facebook needed a vanity license plate? You gotta watch that shit though. You gotta watch things like tagging yourself with a vanity plate or a Facebook name or something. You gotta really know yourself or you can make yourself look foolish. I pulled up behind this guy at the intersection in Toledo a couple weeks ago. Driving an 85 Buick Skylark. Bags full of aluminum cans in the back. Dude weighed 85 pounds, dirty shirt, dirty hair, scabs and track marks on his arms. Four teeth in his head, each one going a different direction to the compass. And on his vanity license plate it said, You won, be me. You won, be me. I wanted to get my own plate right, pull up right next to him and said, No, uh uh. No, uh uh. Drove past this strip club not too long ago. Big sign on the wall said, Monday, sexy baby oil wrestling. But they broke it up into two lines, so it said, sexy baby oil wrestling. And I'm no lawyer. But it seems to me no matter how much oil you use, or how sexy those babies are, that shit can't possibly be legal. <laughs> sexy baby. Now why would they have to specify that it's sexy? It's a strip club. Their only job is to give me a boner. Everything on the menu should be sexy. What do they take down for that? Like, you know, Bob, Monday's awkward cream of mushroom soup wrestling night just isn't working out. <laughs> I don't know what we gotta do for that. And can, can strippers stop using baby oil? Can we stop calling it baby oil when the strippers use it? That offends me as a dad, you know? I don't wanna see the same product being used for infant moisturization that we're using to lube up drunken sluts on lap dance Wednesday. It's not right. A couple of you women are frowning right now. I apologize, I didn't mean to offend anybody. I know your shift's starting soon and uh... my ass kicked after every show now. Because they can still use the baby oil, you know, just rebrand it. Call it something else. You know, Destiny or Bambi or Peaches or whatever the hell her name is. She goes into Walgreens before her shift and picks up a 96 ounce jug of Johnson Stripper Slipper. Now with no more tears till last call formula. Uh, I do feel bad I didn't dress up now. These good looking people here tonight I dress like this. But why the hell am I going to dress up though, really? I'm 39 years old. I'm married. I got two kids. I drive a minivan. I'm a big, fat, white, nerdy guy doing comedy. What, am I going to come up here and get laid? No. It's just not going to happen. Anybody in this room right now that's thinking about fucking me, my fashion sense isn't even on the top five of the shit you had to get over to get to that point in your head. <laughs> There's never been a woman walking into the comedy club going, man, I sure hope tonight's the night. I sure hope I find me a 39-year-old fat, white, nerdy father of two driving a minivan in a nice shirt. Maybe a little Axe body spray on there. It's not gonna happen. I see a couple of guys here, 21, 22, smirking up here right now like, ha fucker, you're old, you don't get laid. I'm 21 years old. Pussy just falls on my dick like birds on Snow White's hand in the middle of the forest. Ha ha, asshole. Yeah, that's great for you. Get back to me in 15 years when your dick and balls start looking like the Wicked Queen's face and we'll talk, alright? Mira, Mira, on the wall, I can sit upon my balls. 
Because that shit happens, does it not, fellas? You get to a certain age, they don't warn you about that in eighth grade health class. They don't tell you anything about that. Because you can still do a lot of shit after 40. You can still drink and do drugs after 40. You can still play video games, go to concerts, do whatever the hell you want, hang out and party. But at some point after 40, you are inadvertently gonna sit on your own scrotum. <laughs> A couple guys right here laughing because they hurt just so they don't cry. <laughs> you see that aging hipster at the bar in the rainbow shirt and the linen glasses with tears in his eyes. He's not reminiscent about how cool the first Lollapalooza was. Let's put it that way. It's because he just sat on his own balls. That's all right. I don't mind being 39. It's, you know, a lot of things like that. Having a good life, having a great time with it right now. feel better than I ever have. The only time it ever gets me down... It's when some little fucker sits down next to me at the bar, some 21, 22, 23 year old kid starts telling me how he's old school. <laughs> hey man, I'm old school, I'm old school. Yeah, you think Limp Biscuit is classic rock. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> 21 years old, you think, why would you even want that when you're 21? You're 21 years old, man, you are on top of the world. You're never gonna be at that peak again and you don't even know it. You got the thing that you're never gonna have again in your life and that's stamina. 21 years old, you can drink all night, fuck all night, smoke a pound of weed, and I'm not saying you'd want to, but if you had to, you could get up the next morning at 7.30 a.m. and save your goddamn job. I do that shit one more time in my life, I'm going in the nursing home. Talk about old school this and old school, yeah man, I'm old school, I don't like new stuff. Motherfucker, you are new stuff. Let me give you a little benchmark there, Tanner. If you've never scraped frost off your car windshield in January in western Michigan with the edge of a broken cassette tape case, then your ass ain't old school, all right? End of fucking story. You guys are fantastic. My name is Keith Bergman. Enjoy the rest of your night. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> suggested that we hit the club in unison we was like all right the two of us were dressing jiggy and the other two was real rock stars we couldn't get in the club because we wasn't matching so we jetted to a titty bar now the whole place was filled with titties with big monkeys in a neon thong so it wasn't too long before i got the tip and with my dollar and a swing you know now I'm paying for these bitches through college But to achieve their modeling goal Go to school for nursing, had to ask a question Have you ever thought of being a hoe? You know, I know, I know I should be ashamed of myself Amazing gawking like a pervert watching To go home to relieve myself Boom, boom I think that our name was J.D. Her stage name was Melissa I was pretty disgusting how she had no booty and my titties were bigger than hers. <laughs> and it was pimping dudes with them dollars. Like one by one, oh how could it be? I thought that was impressed a little miss flat chested, but you ain't getting shit for me. <laughs> she said, started me in front of the dancing and put a string like I know what she wants. So I put a little quarter and I double tapped and told her don't spit it all at once. But to me, I thought it was funny, but it wasn't on the side of a border. She left up the corner, the DJ stopped and ready, said, she gave me a fucking quarter. So she said, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. It started raining from the money she us. The perverse watch and now she stopped at the stage and we laughing our asses off. We like a ha 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 ha. A ho ho he he he. I can't believe you did that stupid ass shit. You are the funny motherfucker, I keep. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. I should have respected her well. She told Chester the boss how we disrespected, but she really disrespected herself. So Chester said that I couldn't do that. While she gave a lap dance and looking at me strange I said, we're in this place that it probably stayed That I can't give a bitch some change So she said, you get the fuck out of here, you fat fuck And me and my crew, we all say pet All the wildest shit that I did in my life This was the time that I won't forget I know, I know I had a crying in the face of it Oh well 
<laughs> From the dollar she told us, I took one of her dollars, so I guess I came out ahead. Boom, boom. <laughs> Hopefully I got enough time for the next one. Wanna hear one more song? Yeah. All right. This is called Get the Fuck Away From Me. TV and I like watch a lot of the commercials. One thing that really bugs me about uh, one of the commercials is the Pure Michigan ads. I really don't like them. I think they're slanted. I understand the Department of Tourism, blah, 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 but it's really a slanted view of what Michigan is really like. So what I'd like to do for you now is play for you, or, well, whatever, perform for you what Michigan is really like. It goes like something like this. It's a land of opportunity. We're hitting a deer as this comment is hearing, hey, I think the economy's turning the corner. <laughs> Experience culture by visiting one of our thousands of party stores owned by the same assholes we bought in passport. <laughs> Take a tour on our many highways glittered with orange barrels. Orange cones, detours, barricades, lane closures, heavy equipment without operators. <laughs> Experience a true sense of road rage as some asshole passes you on the right. And the right lane's closed a half mile ahead. <laughs> Welcome to a state where the losses of its professional football team in recent years raise as high as unemployment rate each year. Welcome to where Marvin is your best friend. Where insurance and divorce are nobody fault. And to the only occupation where you can be consistently wrong and still keep your job, it's our local weatherman. That's Pure Michigan, folks, and I'm Andy B. Thank you. You guys ready to hear some really mean shit tonight or what? Yeah! Good, 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 good. good. Uh, I love women, but some of you are whores. When you bar hop around town in winter with your stupid high heels and your tight miniskirts, 
You look like a slutty baby deer still wrapped up in the placenta. <laughs> I saw a paraplegic woman in a wheelchair laugh at a girl who slipped on hard ice while she was wearing those high heels. And at first thought, I was like, wow, that's poetic justice. But then I was like, hey, you bully, how do you know how that feels? <laughs> hey, at least her feet weren't cold. <laughs> I hate racist uh, I hate racist white dudes who see a white girl with a black guy and say, well, we lost another one. <laughs> Gentlemen, don't think of it like losing another sister. Think of it as gaining another broken family. I said to a buddy, I could never date a girl who's been with a black guy. He said, dude, that's, that's kind of racist. Well, that's not racist. It's sensitive. You're sensitive to what? I go her vagina. She's not going to feel a fucking thing after she's with me. I'm, I'm there for you. No. On the flip side of the coin, I recently found out uh, from a friend of mine that when black guys see a white dude with a black girl, they say, oh, he's not going to know what to do with her. Well, I'll tell you from personal experience, I know exactly how to love him, leave him, and not pay child support. Fuck that shit. I'm, I'm with you guys on that one. Same team. I didn't want them, so I don't pay. It's not that hard. No. Uh, when my girlfriend uh, got pregnant and refused to, to get an abortion, she said to me, you know, Jamie, we just need to be creative about our future. So I created a timeline showing when I wanted her to get out of the fucking house. <laughs> by, by timeline, I mean a dot. <laughs> Well, this is a. I got in a bar fight with this this meathead who was lipping off to me and putting his arms around my girl. He was bigger, stronger, and more confident than me, so he kicked my ass. Uh, after both of us were embarrassed at how stupid we were, so we hugged it out pretty good. And I looked at him and said, "Dude, why didn't you tell me you had Down syndrome?" <laughs> Well, uh, I do read the Bible as any good Christian does, and then uh, and I saw that there are more verses in there condemning gluttony than any other social issue that's out there, abortion, gays, I mean way more. You look it up, it's in the Bible. So if you're one of those people, like the, uh, the Westboro Baptist Church people, uh, who take the Bible literally word for word, and you're kind of fat, uh, Congresswoman Gabriel Giffords has a better chance of becoming a Marine sniper than you do at getting into heaven, according to the Bible. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck the Westboro, fuck the Westboro Baptist Church. I got a new sign for them. God hates fat Christians. Uh, if you have energy to protest for your shitty cause while people grave at funerals, okay, then you have the energy to put your fat, bigoted ass on a treadmill in Jesus' name, for Christ's sake. Okay. Uh, it's International Darwin Day today, uh, and every year at this time, I wonder if God questions the existence of His Creator. Uh, God is huge. Uh, he's everywhere. So God's mom must have been fucking massive. Do you think after God's dad hit that and he's bragging this to his friends the next day, he called her the Big Bang? <laughs> Do you think that, uh, do you think that when gay people are talking, deaf people get the wrong message? <laughs> and, and what if there's, what if there's a gay deaf person? If they sign language with their hands too close together, does that mean they have a lisp? 